This is the morning office for March 18th. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Hear our voice, O Lord, according to your faithful love. According to your judgment, give us life. Blessed are you, God of compassion and mercy. To you be praise and glory forever. In the darkness of our sin, your light breaks forth like the dawn, and your healing springs up for deliverance. As we rejoice in the gift of your saving help, sustain us with your bountiful spirit, and open our lips to sing your praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. The portion of the Psalter appointed for today is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Susanna. There was a man living in Babylon whose name was Joachim. He married the daughter of Hilkiah named Susanna, a very beautiful woman and one who feared the Lord. Her parents were righteous and had trained their daughter according to the law of Moses. Joachim was very rich and had a fine garden adjoining his house. The Jews used to come to him because he was the most honored of them all. That year, two elders from the people were appointed as judges. Concerning them, the Lord had said, Wickedness came forth from Babylon, from elders who were judges, who were supposed to govern the people. These men were frequently at Joachim's house, and all who had a case to be tried came to them there. When the people left at noon, Susanna would go into her husband's garden to walk. Every day the two elders used to see her going in and walking about, and they began to lust for her. They suppressed their consciences and turned away their eyes from looking to heaven or remembering their duty to administer justice. Once, while they were waiting for an opportune day, she went in as before with only two maids and wished to bathe in the garden, for it was a hot day. No one was there except the two elders, who had hidden themselves and were watching her. She said to her maids, Bring me olive oil and ointments, and shut the garden doors so that I can bathe. They did as she told them. They shut the doors of the garden and went out by the side doors to bring what they had been commanded. They did not see the elders because they were hiding. When the maids had gone out, the two elders got up and ran to her. They said, Look, the garden doors are shut and no one can see us. We are burning with desire for you, so give your consent and lie with us. If you refuse, we will testify against you that a young man was with you, and this was why you sent your maids away. Susanna groaned and said, I am completely trapped, for if I do this, it will mean death to me. If I do not, I cannot escape your hands. I choose not to do it. I will fall into your hands rather than sin in the sight of the Lord. Then Susanna cried out with a loud voice, and the two elders shouted against her, and one of them ran and opened the garden doors. When the people in the house heard the shouting in the garden, they rushed in at the side door to see what had happened to her. And when the elders told their story, the servants felt very much ashamed, for nothing like this had ever been said about Susanna. The next day, when the people gathered at the house of her husband Joachim, the two elders came, full of their wicked plot to have Susanna put to death. In the presence of the people, they said, Send for Susanna, daughter of Hilkiah, the wife of Joachim. Then the two elders stood up before the people and laid their hands on her head. Through her tears she looked up toward heaven, for her heart trusted in the Lord. The elders said, While we were walking in the garden alone, this woman came in with two maids, shut the garden doors, and dismissed the maids. Then a young man, who was hiding there, came to her and lay with her. 
We were in a corner of the garden, and when we saw this wickedness, we ran to them. Although she, we saw, she saw them embracing, we could not hold the man because he was stronger than we are, and he opened the doors and got away. We did, however, seize this woman and asked who the young man was, but she would not tell us. These things we testify. Because they were elders of the people and judges, the assembly believed them and condemned Susanna to death. Then Susanna cried out with a loud voice and said, O eternal God, you know what is secret and are aware of all things before they come to be. You know that these men have given false evidence against me. And now I am to die, though I have done none of the wicked things that they have charged against me. The Lord heard her cry. Just as she was being led off to execution, God stirred up the Holy Spirit of a young lad named Daniel. And he shouted with a loud voice, I want no part in shedding this woman's blood. All the people turned to him and asked, What is this you are saying? Taking his stand among them, he said, Are you such fools, O Israelites, as to condemn a daughter of Israel without examination, without learning the facts? Return to court, for these men have given false evidence against her. So all the people hurried back, and the rest of the elders said to him, Come, sit among us and inform us, for God has given you the standing of an elder. Daniel said to them, Separate them far from each other, and I will examine them. When they were separated from each other, he summoned one of them and said to him, You old relic of wicked days, your sins have now come home, which you have committed in the past, pronouncing unjust judgments, condemning the innocent, and acquitting the guilty, though the Lord said, You shall not put an innocent and righteous person to death. Now then, if you really saw this woman, tell me this. Under what tree did you see them being intimate with each other? He answered, Under a mastic tree. And Daniel said, Very well, this lie has cost you your head, for the angel of God has received the sentence from God and will immediately cut you in two. Then putting him to one side, he ordered them to bring the other. And he said to him, You offspring of Canaan and not of Judah, beauty has beguiled you and lust has perverted your heart. This is how you have been treating the daughters of Israel, and they were intimate with you through fear. But a daughter of Judah would not tolerate your wickedness. Now then, tell me, under what tree did you catch them being intimate with each other? He answered, Under an evergreen oak. Daniel said to him, Very well, this lie has cost you also your head. For the angel of God is waiting with his sword to split you in two, so as to destroy you both. Then the whole assembly raised a great shout and blessed God, who saves those who hope in him. And they took action against the two elders, because out of their own mouths Daniel had convicted them of bearing false witness. They did to them as they had wickedly planned to do to their neighbor. Acting in accordance with the law of Moses, they put them to death. Thus innocent blood was spared that day. The Word of the Lord. Jesus, Savior of the world, come to us in your mercy. We look to you to save and help us. By your cross and your life laid down, you set your people free. We look to you to save and help us. When they were ready to perish, you saved your disciples. We look to you to come to our help. In the greatness of your mercy, loose us from our chains. Forgive the sins of all your people. Make yourself known as our Savior and mighty Deliverer. Help and save us that we may praise you. Come now and dwell with us, Lord Christ Jesus. Hear our prayer and be with us always. And when you come in your glory, make us to be one with you and to share the life of your kingdom. Given the length of the reading this morning, I will not say a whole lot about silence, but I will uh, offer this thought. Another writer on the subject equates being silent with coming to our senses, which I think is an interesting idea. Normally, we imagine our senses as being things that add things to us, what we see, what we hear, what we taste, what we can touch. They make us different or add to us in some way. Silence, however, is not like that. In a way, it is choosing deliberately not to add something, the sound of our own voice, the sounds that are around us, deliberately trying to put them away from us, at least temporarily. I think silence is the recognition that God is enough. That there is nothing that needs to be added or removed. Nothing more is needed. God is enough. I ask your prayers today for the day, the world, and the church. Pray that all those who will be in need today 
will receive from God what they are in need of to be sustained in their times of difficulty. Be gracious to your people, we entreat you, O Lord, that they, repenting day by day of the things that displease you, may be more and more filled with love of you and of your commandments, and being supported by your grace in this life, may come to the full enjoyment of eternal life in your everlasting kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from, our from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. May God, our Redeemer, show us compassion and love. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.